In this video, we're going to talk about common networking components, and this is going to be a brief introduction to some of the more common networking components. Later in the course, we're going to go into great detail, and I'm going to have dedicated lectures on all the different major networking devices, so don't feel like this is all you're going to get out of this course. This is just a brief introduction to some of the more common ones, so as we move further forward in the class, it's all going to make a lot more sense. So let's go ahead and let's get started with this lecture. So there's three different devices we're going to talk about on this slide. We're going to talk about routers, firewalls, and switches. And before we get into that, here's a basic network diagram at the bottom. And we have a router down here. And so let me go ahead and mark this. So we have a router here. And this whole area right here within the router, this is going to be our network. So let me go ahead and change colors on here so we can see the difference. So this right here is our network, and on the border of the network, we always have a router. And that's really what's going to show the edge of our border, and on the other side is the internet that we're trying to connect to. So with that said, what does a router do? We know now that the router is on the edge of the network. Well, it's simple in what it does. It connects one local area network, so one LAN, or one network for short, to another one. And that's the whole point of a router, is that it routes traffic from one network to another. And in this example, we're using the internet down here. So it allows us to route traffic from our network across the internet to a, some other network. And if we think about it, remember when we talk about the internet, remember it's nothing more than multiple networks connected to get together. So we can call that an internet network, or we can call it a wide area network. And remember a wide area network it is nothing more than multiple local area networks connected together. So let me just go ahead and type in WAN. And remember, the internet is nothing more than a wide area network. So that's what a router does. Now let's talk about the firewall. And let me go ahead and circle the firewall as well, and we'll use a different color. So here's our firewall. And you'll notice here is that we have our local area network, and right on the inner edge border of our network is a firewall. So what it do, does it do? Well, as its name implies, it keeps fires out. And when we're talking from a networking perspective and a cybersecurity perspective, a fire is malicious data. So we're trying to keep hackers out. And we're trying to keep all their malicious hacking attempts out of our network. So if they're trying to send malware into our network or if they're trying to gain access to our network, the whole point behind the firewall is to prevent that from happening. So it really, more than anything, keeps the bad stuff out of the network. And we're not going to go into detail into what all the different malware is and all this different malicious data trying to get into the network is and all these attacks are because this is not an information security and cybersecurity class or penetration testing class. But I just want you to understand from a high level that a firewall protects our network from malicious data and malicious packets of information. And when we're talking about a packet, that is what we're talking about when information goes across the network, we call it a packet. So lastly, let's talk about a switch. And let me go ahead and circle the switch as well with a different color. So here's our switch. Once we move further into our network, so we go from one device to the next. And let me go ahead and use my arrow, and we'll go ahead and use this in red. So we have data coming in. Let's say we have data coming in to the network router, it goes into our network, it goes in the firewall, the firewall says, okay, this data is clean, it goes into our switch, and then our switch, what it does is it connects everything on our network together, and it switches traffic, so it determines where traffic goes on the network. And a really good analogy is, for example, remember a long time ago when they had operators in a phone station where they actually switched the phone calls from one switch to another to connect people. Well, that's really what a network does. If we think, if we know that the data needs to go up to our laptop, then that's what it's going to do. It's going to route it to the wireless access point that's going to send it to our laptop over here. So really think of it as the switch is really, it switches the data and determines where it needs to go on the network, connecting our network together. So that's how these three different devices work in combination together to get data where it needs to go on our network. We have our routers that route data across one network to the next. 
We have our firewalls that's going to protect our personal network, keeping the bad stuff out. And we have our switch connecting everything together on the network, making sure data, once it gets into our network, it goes where it needs to go. So now let's talk about servers. So we talked about servers in our previous lectures. We talked about the client server architecture. But I want to just, just quickly discuss with you some of the more common types of servers. And this is going to be a quick discussion. So there are different types of common servers that you're going to see on a regular basis. And let's talk about them. So we have authentication servers. An authentication server, what it does is that it manages the access control to your network. So it manages who can get on and who can't get on. It manages the username and password. It manages what resources they have access to by having access control set in place. And it manages what time of the day and what days people can access the network. A file server, as its name implies, it manages and stores the files on the server. So it stores the files and as people need them, it gives it to them. And when they're done, it stores them again. The mail server, well, you know, it's like the post office. It's like the digital post office because the mail server is what handles the emailing functionality of your network. So if you have Outlook set up and you need to send emails from other people on your network, that's what the mail server does. The print server, again, as the name implies, if you need to print something out to one of the printers on the network, well, that's what the printer server is there for. It's there to manage the print jobs on the network and it's there to give different people and different resources higher priorities and different priorities on different printers on the network. Now a web server, that's if you have a public website set up or if you have an internal internet set up for your company, that's where you're gonna host that so everybody has access to that. We can also have application servers. So if we have our own customized applications that we need to have set in place for our company, maybe we have you know accounting software where we need to have an application server or we have you know, some sort of other business function that requires spe a special application, then that's what we're gonna have with our application servers on the network. And then data typically stored from applications usually go to database servers. So many applications store their data in a database and, and you know, a majority of the different systems out there are going to be doing that. So you're gonna have database servers set up in place to store your data. And so their simple role is just simply to manage the data in a database. So that's our common networking components. So we talked about our common networking devices, talked about the router, firewalls, and switches, and we talked about our common servers in, you know, about seven minutes worth of detail. So a high level detail, enough to give you an overview. So later in the course, we'll be talking about a lot more of this stuff in detail, and I'll be talking to you about many more different networking components. But hopefully this will serve as a good primer moving forward in the class. So thanks for watching, and we'll see you at the next video.